since this video is about who I'd want to bring back in G3 of Monster High, I thought I would bring in an expert and get their opinion. So Frankie, who do you think should come back to G3 of Monster High? They just told me to release the next doll autopsy. Hi everyone, I'm Ari Lynette, and welcome to the Ollieverse. So, I love G3 of Monster High, and I feel like I haven't really made it much of a secret, at least on my Twitter, but I've realised I've never actually made a video about G3 of Monster High on this channel, probably because I haven't really been making a lot of videos in a while, don't, don't ask. So I thought I would have a go at pitching who I think should come back next. Gradually, G3 has been bringing back more and more of the old characters, and I want in, basically. I want to make decisions. Mattel can run, but they can't hide from my influence. I've been a fan of Monster High for over a decade. If I say I want to bring back some random character that has zero plot relevance, god damn it, I want them back. And there are also some characters where I honestly could not care less if they came back at all. So this video is all about that. But quick note, I do have a new microphone, so please let me know how the audio is sounding on this. I'm not 100% sure how it's going to turn out. I also have a new tumbler. I'm no longer restricted to sipping out of a beaker, and I don't have to cut out all my slapping noises. It's got all the divas on, and Amaya is also there. So let's get onto the tier list itself. Well, this isn't really a tier list, honestly. I mean, it is, but it's more about exploring which characters I want to see back and which characters I don't think they need to bring back, and it just happens to be on the format of a tier maker list, so... I guess it is a tier list. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the top tier is just the characters that are already in G3. There's nothing really much to say about that. Except whoever made this tier list decided to put a picture of Venus in fan art. You know, curious choice. The next tier is the one I'm going to be the most passionate about, and that is the Bring Them Home tier. These are the ones that I, me personally, really want them to bring back. I want Monster High to bring these characters back and have them as dolls, and be in the series, I am vouching for these ones. These are my top priority picks. I know there is some speculation about the future of the Monster High TV series, and whether it's coming back, has it been cancelled, don't worry about it. That isn't that relevant to this video, so mm, it's fine. It, it, it's totally fine. So the next category is, yeah, Jackie. Oh my god, Jackie! Yeah, Bracky. I swear, my tier names are just getting more and more specific. Someone's gonna teach culture around here. These are for the characters where I'm like, sure, I can bring them back. I, I'm not that passionate about it, but I'm not passionate against it. Like, I'm, yeah, sure, bring them back. Let's see a new interpretation on them. Yeah. Bracky. So the next tier is, I just don't see it. These are characters, I'd be fine with them coming back. I'd have no problem with it, but... I, I just don't see it happening, and I think that there are reasons why maybe it might not happen. Those reasons will be probably more specific to each character. Our next tier is clap if you care. Clap if you care. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Spoiler alert, I don't about these ones. <laughs> this is the tier for characters where I'm just like, I, I don't care if these characters come back. Like, it's fine. I'm not, like, angry if they do come back. In fact, good for them, and good for anyone who's a fan of these characters. But for me, I'm not up at night thinking about these characters never being in G3. Again, this is nothing against people who like these characters. If you like these characters, more power to you. But I am the one making the video, so what can you do? And then the final tier. <laughs> this is the oof.mp3 tier. I would play the audio, but I'd rather not have Tommy Tallarico try and sue me. This tier is exclusively reserved for characters that probably will not come back for cultural reasons. So let me put it another way. Skeleta was designed by, I believe, a designer of Mexican heritage, and you can see through her design, I feel like I'm saying design a lot, that she was put together with a lot of care and consideration and knowledge for the culture that the doll is representing. And a lot of the other Monster High characters in G1 from other cultures 
were not designed with that same level of consideration. And as a result, some of them veer into stereotyping, incorrect representation, into appropriation, and in some cases, just into being a bit offensive. And for those reasons, I don't think that the G3 team, doll or show, would try and bring them back. And that's just kind of how it is. It's okay to have affection for these characters, but it's also important to acknowledge why maybe they should be left in G1. Again, this is my opinion. I'm not the arbiter of all of this. And I am open to civil discussion in the comments. But you better be nice, or I will go away for four months again. So, with all that over with, let's actually get to this list. You're probably wondering why Invisibility is in this Bring Them Home tier already. And there's a reason. Because technically, Invisibility is already back in Monster High G3. In the TV series, in season two, there is an episode where I believe the episode is where a bunch of students are trying to scare Mrs. O'Shriek, who's one of the new teachers, because she's basically lost her voice and she needs to get her banshee scream back. And one of the characters that attempts this is Invisibility. So Invisibility is canon in G3. However, Invisibility only appears as his invisible form. So we do not have a visible design for Invisibility. And goddammit, I want to see it. I want an Invisibility design in the series and I want an Invisibility doll. I think Monster High in general has always been kind of running low on promising boy characters. Other than the siblings, they usually tend to either be love interests or webisode exclusive characters that only got a doll by chance or because of an SDCC exclusive. And Invisibility seems like a cool exception and I like that about him. I know he was paired off with Scarra later on, but at least they gave him time to exist as a character first. And I, I can appreciate that. But I think that having an Invisible Man character overall, regardless of who it is, is a great idea. Because the Invisible Man is one of the Universal monsters. And I know that G3 isn't in partnership with Universal, but if you think about it, the global kind of standard in the culture for monsters is really the Universal monsters. So I imagine that that gives Invisibility some clout in coming back. Also, he was in the Lacey Harrison books. There are a whole other canon in itself, but that's gotta count for something, right? If he does come back, I would like him to keep his beanie and his plugs. Honestly, I am up for some new mythos with him, and maybe an expanded colour scheme. So I'm just gonna go in straight with another character that I want to see back in Monster High G3, and that is Operetta. Do you know when you have a statement and it's like, it's not actually true, but in your mind, it feels true. For me, that statement is, Operetta is an OG Monster High character. She is, to me. And I do know she was not in volume one of the webisodes, she was not in the first two waves of dolls, she was technically a later addition. However, she was in Halt's Diary, and she was one of the first trademarks for Monster High characters back in 2007. There were people online making their own fan operetta OCs based on the character in Halt's Diary. Like, Operetta is an OG, I don't know what to tell you. And the Phantom of the Opera is another just very iconic monster to me, I believe, also one of the Universal Monsters. I would say Andrew Lloyd Webber also gives us some sort of clout, but then again, you don't see Daughter of the Jellicle Cats in Monster High. Not that I would complain, that's all I'm gonna say. But I love Operetta, I think that she is such a fun character. I feel like I'm stating a lot of my points from the Monster High character ranking video I did on this channel all the way back, but Operetta is just so cool! I like that she's a rockabilly Phantom of the Opry, I like that she's southern, I think she's a real mark of creativity, and I would love to see her back. I don't mind if they change some stuff, let's be real, Monster High in G3 is doing a lot of law changing and a lot of character changing. A lot of it I'm kind of fine with. So I am, I would be open to seeing a new interpretation on Operetta. I mean, any Applejack fan knows it's an uphill battle for any character with a country accent. But I think that her aesthetic is just too cool to not bring back. Again, maybe with an expanded colour scheme. I think that that would be really cool to see with for her. There's one more character I'm going to put in Essential for now, and that is Rebecca. I love Rebecca. Again, I mentioned a lot of these reasons in that first Monster High ranking video, but a lot of that was solely based on G1, and I want to get into some of the potential of Rebecca in G3. I believe I mentioned before that Rebecca is one of the most tied to the law in terms of characters in Monster High, but even then, she's just very cool as it is. She's an old-timey steampunk robot. I don't know why I'm explaining Rebecca Steam to a bunch of y'all. Y'all know who Rebecca Steam is, but I like that she's more old-timey steampunk as opposed to kind of 
modern robot. And I like that she is connected to the law in that way, and I think that they can change that, and they can have different law and have Rebecca connect to that. I don't think it would be that far of a stretch, but even regardless of that, Rebecca is visually a very cool character, and I feel like she was always overshadowed a bit by Venus and Rochelle, when really Rebecca is the most interesting out of the three. <laughs> so I will go to battle for Rebecca's team. I have also seen some people wanting a Desi Rebecca's team, and I would like to say that that is a great idea, that I fully support that. I have seen some really cool designs. That is some potential there. Explore that. I would love to see that. This might be a bit controversial, but Holt and Jackson are kind of like a, yeah, sure, why not? Like, I'm not like, actively clawing at the walls for their comeback. There's already people thinking that they won't come back because of the whole Mr. Comos is actually Hyde's son thing from the live action films, but it's pretty established at this point that the live action films and the doll canon are different. You know, things like Claudine and Deuce's relationship, and Frankie having both legs. Like, they're clearly doing different things. And while I think they could do something with having a Nami character come in, especially since there is that whole monsters and humans conflict in G3, which I love, I think that there's potential for that, but I feel like if they brought back Hulk, they'd probably redesign him a lot. And it's all because this one here. I remember back in 2010, or around the time when the first webisodes were coming out, and Heath showed up in the webisodes, but Holt didn't, and people were thinking that Heath was like an old Holt design, or something like that. I always think it's been this weird canon discontinuity that they've had these two characters that both have fire hair. They're different characters, they're nuanced, but it, it does seem like a very odd choice. And I just think they would probably rethink Jackson and Holt nowadays, they'd do something different. And even then, I think that's a later season arc. I, I don't know if that's something they'd do right away. I mean, it's not like they're exactly clawing at opportunities to make boy dolls. I'm gonna put Katrine in this category too, because I'm not that invested in Katrine as a character, but I feel like they're probably gonna make dolls of her because she's marketable. Just like they did in G1. <laughs> oh, the world needs this? Oh, let's do eight of these. Like, let's keep going. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, she's beautiful, her designs are always great, but I think that G3 would be a great opportunity to give her more of a personality, or make her more of a presence if they did bring her back. Because right now, Katrine is kind of forgettable, and the one thing I do remember about her is that they made a lot of dolls of her because she was marketable. Or at least that's what I think. It's my canon. I honestly don't see them bringing back C.A. Cupid in G3, but I would honestly like to see it, if only for the fact that the Ever After High fandom would probably take it well. I'm totally kidding, I, I have no idea how they take it. But that's why I want to see it, because I want to see flames, I want to see chaos. I want people to wake up from a slumber and realise that C.A. Cupid is back at Monster High, and have to rationalise that within their brains. I deserve to see that future, but I don't think Mattel's going to give it to us. If they did bring back Cupid, make her more of a bone elemental, give her a full inside skeleton, translucent. We know you have the technology, Mattel. We've all seen the off-white dolls, and then we all probably saw the price tag and clicked right off the page. Yeah, I think Cupid would be a fun addition if they did want to make her more monstery. I just don't think they're gonna do it. I think the Ever After High connection is too strong. I don't think Mattel's gonna touch Ever After High with the 10-foot pole, especially now they can make Descendants dolls. By the way, I did record another ranking video of the Descendants dolls, but then the audio turned out terrible. Part of the reason why I have a new mic. I would like to refilm that. I don't know when. But anyway, Cupid is an I don't see it. Vandala is gonna be clap if you care for me. I've just never liked her design. And I think the idea of a pirate ghost seems like something they wouldn't bring back. It seems like almost a little niche. I wouldn't hate to see her back, but it's just like, I don't know if this design is gonna get me excited for a potential Vandala comeback. I'm just like, whatever. You wanted to see her in Shriek Wrecked? okay. <laughs> would make sense thematically. Would her doll look good? I will say if she did come back, I want to see the pet scuttlefish thing. Is it a cuttlefish or a s I don't- I think I said scuttlefish. I want to see it back. I will make a separate tier for I, the scuttlefish. Why did I call it a fucking scuttlefish again? This is why I take such long breaks, because I do shit like this. And the first entry into the oof.mp3 category is Gigi Grant. I think the idea of having a genie character is 
fun, especially from a story perspective, because you can have them basically be the conduit for a lot of chaos, and I think that Thirteen Wishes was a great example of that, and it was one of my favourite Monster High movies, and still has a very close place in my heart. But I think we kind of need to wake up and smell the Orientalism with this one. Many people online have talked about Gigi's design and how it represents a lot of orientalist characteristics. And I think you could probably extend that to a lot of Thirteen Wishes and the surrounding lines. Which again, if you like those lines, that's okay. We can like these lines and have nostalgia and fondness for them, but still accept the flaws and their issues. But if you look at the mood board they did for Gigi Grant, a lot of it seems to be like, white people at Coachella. If your reference is inherently appropriative, that's not going to create an authentic design. It's going to create a caricature, and I think that that did come through with Gigi, and it, it does kind of suck to say that. But also, like, I get over that, because I have a rational brain, <laughs> and I can accept that sometimes you have to move on from things that are problematic. I'm also going to put Wisp down here as well, because they are twins, <laughs> and they both share a lot of design elements, and a lot of those design elements are the design elements that are Orientalist, and we shall just leave it at that. If they were going to make a genie character for G3, I think they would probably just start from scratch. Right, Widona Spider. I want Widona back, specifically because one, we did not see nearly enough of her in G1. She was in the Girlfriends books, and she had some brief appearances in the CGI movies, but this diva deserved more, and I need to see her get more screen time. And let's face it, G3 is the future. Let's get her in G3. And I want them to make her as a doll. And I would love to see that six arm body return. I know that outfit is probably going to be very basic because they'd have to get the budget in for the body, but I'll take it. You can make nine Skultimate Secrets with donors and pay it off. Get that return on investment. Just like, maybe put them in cardboard boxes instead of the plastic ones. I don't know. Anyway, Widona, bring her back. And what's great about a character like her is that she didn't really get that much on-screen development? You have the diary and you have the books, but on a visual level you could probably do a lot with Widona, and people wouldn't be that mad if you changed much. She kind of has the comic book aesthetic with her Comic-Con doll and her I Heart Fashion doll, but I think, here's my pitch, retro pop art Widona. Give me stylized face markings, give me bende dots. Maybe even bring back some of those Daughter of Arachne influences. You have a lot of opportunities to do something with her, and I want to see it done. Scara is cute. I like Scara, but also I think that the reasons why I'd want her back are mostly because I think her design is cute, and I like her retro style, and I love her accent. Well, there are a lot of characters on here, I'll change my mind later. Scara is going in the top. Having a character who can read minds is just too good to pass up. Again, retro. She's a backgrounder, so she has a lot of nostalgia to her. I mean, she's Irish for God's sake. You've got to bring her back. So yeah, I do want to see Scara back. Right, Claudia. I don't see how they're going to bring back Claudia. I like her. I like her toothy grin and her glasses and her McDonald's colour scheme. We have a British character. Naturally, I'm going to want to see some British representation, obviously. But the Wolf family law in G3 has been so... I don't want to say messed up, because I'm, I don't necessarily think it's been messed up as much as it's been changed in a way that's kind of rubbed people the wrong way. But Claudine starts off as an only child, basically. Claudine is not her sister, she's just like another werewolf. And then we go into Behem, Claude comes out, Claude is her older but younger brother. Is there any room for Claudia in this equation? Especially now that the mum's back. I don't see how this is gonna work with another sibling added to the wolf pack in G3. It made sense in G1, it actually made, like, more sense to have even more siblings <laughs> than just Claudia, but I don't see how they'd retrofit her in. Maybe as, like, a cousin? And Claudine's half-human, so what kind of cousin would she be? How would that fit into everything? I, I don't know this kind of genealogy. <laughs> I kind of had a long day, I don't have the the work ethic to do that. So Mattel is gonna have to go into a board meeting, sit everyone down, and decide how they can bring back Claudia, or if they can. Like, they put in that much effort for a character that appeared, like, twice. I'm also gonna put in Zombie Gaga in here, then I'll get the rights back to Zombie Gaga. I love Zombie Gaga, I would love to have her doll if she wasn't possibly one of the most obscenely expensive dolls in the history of Monster High. I doubt that they'd bring Lady Gaga back to, I don't know, do whatever she did with the Zombie Gaga doll. I'm pretty sure it was her sister who designed it. I don't even know how much involvement Gaga even had in that doll. Again, I would love to see it, but I think Gaga's a bit too busy with house labs and Nurtech commercials to 
come back to do Monster High collaborations. I, I, I just don't see it. Perry and Pearl can be a yeah Jackie, and it's not necessarily because they have that much investment in their characters. I just think that they're body is cool. And I know that the two-headed thing was a little bit late coming in G1. I remember Dr. Franken Design doing that years earlier, but still, it's a mermaid with two heads. It's inherently cool in the way that Widona is, but Widona's cooler, sorry. But you are bickering twin sister mermaids. I I'd be down with an interpretation of that for G3. That will be cool. Johnny Spirit, I feel like, is a clap if you care. This just seems like one of those webisode characters that kind of is just there and didn't really have that much significance and was more just as a love interest. And I don't really know if that's the angle that G3 is going with in terms of characters, especially boy characters. The comebacks seem more purposeful, like Manny and Finnegan. First of all, they both have dolls, and Manny was a relatively important minor character, and Finnegan was an important moment of representation. I don't see Johnny Spirit fitting into that model. But then again, they, they brought back Romulus, <laughs> so I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Posey Reef I'm putting in clap if you care as well. I've talked about how I don't care for Posey. I think her design is cluttered. I think her hair blend is nice, but I kind of don't think they should make dolls out of gods. She's like the daughter of Poseidon. Gods aren't monsters, are they? Are they? I don't think they are. The song is called Gods and Monsters. If Lana Del Rey meant that gods were monsters, she would have just said monsters. So I'm gonna be the monster police and I'm gonna say you don't come in because you are not actually a monster. Color, however, I would like to see back. First of all, Kraken is a monster. And also I think Color was just a really cool doll and a sign of where G1 could go if it was allowed to continue. Which technically it did with the alumni dolls, but uh, this is not the timeline where G1 continued as it was. This is the timeline when G1 was like resurrected later on as a weird collector thing. And Kala just showed so much promise with her having a curvy sculpt, I think that she has a beautiful face, her hair is cool, her arms are cool, her tentacles are cool, she has tentacles. Again, same thing with Perry and Pearl, some aspects of these dolls are just inherently cool and tentacles definitely applies, so for that reason I do think they should bring back colour. I'm also, controversially, Dana Treasure Jones. I want to see it. I have a challenge. Redesign Dana Treasurer Jones and make her not like that. Not that her design is like the worst thing in the world, but I think that the Davy Jones daughter concept is good. I think I even had an OC of one of those, but I think she's just too bright to kind of fit in with the whole Davy Jones mythos. Make her grimier. It's like deep under the sea. I want to see dark green. You can have some gold, but I want it a little bit more like rusted up. I might even allow some teal and maybe some light blue but I mostly want dark green. And those are my stipulations for a Dana Treasurer Jones comeback. If you accept this proposition, Mattel, feel free to fill out the form in the comments section, which isn't there because I made it up. Andy Beast, I feel like they missed the boat on Andy Beast in G1. They had him in for Skull Shawls. People liked him well enough. He ended up going to Monster High for a bit. I don't even know if he stayed there by the end of it. I can't even remember. And I remember of a good few number of Frankie and Andy shippers. So like, there was traction behind him, and they just never brought him back. And honestly, if that's the way they treated him then, they're probably not going to bring him back again. But I will say, a purple boy, I would love to see. Even if it's not Andy Beast. I don't ask for much. Goliope, I think, will happen, and I think it would be cool for that to happen. She doesn't have to be circus-themed necessarily. In fact, I think it would be kind of cool if she wasn't circus-themed and they tried something else with Goliope. Because at her core, she's like a giant girl. That is cool. Different scales of character are inherently intriguing. And especially from a play perspective, like, you should do it. I do really like her backstory as well, and I know that G3 has changed things with the backstories and things, and that's okay. But that, that diary page with like the little gooey tears on the paper, that made me sad. And if it didn't make you sad, <laughs> that I, you, you might not have a heart, I hate to tell you. But I think Goliathy will happen eventually. I think that it's a matter of time, it is a matter of budget. Insufficient funds! You ain't got no money! Right, here's a character I really want to bring back. Kiesti! If we're being technical, Kiesti is kind of back, but in the G1 new comics. There's like a panel that just got shown with Ghoulier and Kiesti playing video games, and I love that. 
but I'm not really engaging that much with the G1 comics. They're just there to me. It's like the side quest. It's not the main thing. G3 series is the main thing, and I want to see Kiersey back for there. Again, I'm all for changing things up, maybe making her design less dated, because I think her design is very of its time, which isn't a bad thing. She even has like the, the bride and bandwidth glasses. If that's not a sign of the times, I don't, I don't know what is. But I would like them to keep her hat and a scrunched up little face, because that's what makes her cute. I think they should also make her Ghoulia's gamer girlfriend. That leads me on to another Ghoulia related plot, and that is slow-mo. And I have my doubts about slow-mo, whether they'd bring him back. He's very much a love interest character that got a doll because people wanted to see him get a doll. And a big part of the reason why we engaged with slow-mo as a character is because in the web series we engaged very heavily with Ghoulia as a character. And I don't know how much of a popular opinion this is, but I'm kind of bored with G3 Ghoulia. I love her dolls, don't get me wrong, that signature G3 Ghoulia doll I will defend until I die, but I feel like her personality and her characterization it feels a lot flatter. I don't mind that she speaks English, I'm fine with that, but it just seems like she's just the gamer ghoul and like Okay. It was an aspect of Ghoulia's original character, but it's like, that was an aspect. It feels like it's the aspect of G3 Ghoulia. That and skateboarding. And you couldn't even bring back Scream. Cowards. So I think that slow mo's presence depends on the audience's engagement with Ghoulia, and I just don't think there's the same engagement with Ghoulia in G3 as there was with G1. I think that's the one character that does feel a little bit of a a downgrade compared to G1, whereas I feel like a lot of the G3 characters, now I say a lot of them feel like upgrades. I just think that uh, slow mo's presence depends on that, and I don't see it. Unless they wanted to do a little bit of ship switcheroo, introduce him, but pair him with a different character. I am all for switching around ships. Because other than Cleo and Deuce, they've been pretty conventional with the ships they've been teasing. Dracula and Claude are getting teased a bit. Laguna and Gil are gonna be a thing. Abby and Heath are gonna be a thing as well. Sure, you have some curveballs like Clanky and Nefera and the Bear, but otherwise I think they've been kind of playing it safe with some of these couples. Give me some mix-ups. I want to see Slow-Mo and Katrine dating. Invisibility and Goliope dating. That I am willing to see, but again, I doubt it. I'm also going to put Chad and Claire down in this category because, let's face it, fans like Chad and Claire, I like Chad and Claire, Mattel probably forgot they even existed, and as much as they could have used the Skelecta dolls as an opportunity to make these fan favourite characters, they haven't been doing that. You don't see them making a fawn doll, which they really should have by now. And there are new human characters that they have in the G3 series. I don't remember the names, but they exist. They're like the monster hunter trio. I think that that's their replacement for Chad and Claire. However, there is someone that I think could and should come back from the same movie. Lilith, get up the top. I mean, she's a Van Hellscream. Monster hunting is an established thing in this universe. They've gone like fully back to the humans versus monsters, which I love. I love that about the old Monster High, and I think that they should have continued that for as long as possible, instead of doing monster world travel. So I think it makes sense for Lilith to come back as a monster hunting character, an antagonistic presence, which G3 definitely needs. Especially now Torrelai's gone through her redemption arc, Nefer is nice now. All things I'm fine with, but we still need conflict. It can't just be the sexy fox man causing problems for everyone. We need these ghouls to face villainous characters their own ages. And that brings me on to two additions that I'm also going to put here. Gauri is less of a I need to see her, but more of a I think it would be cool if she would be back. She would be back. <laughs> She's a simple character, she could easily be replaced by anyone, but the fact that she is so simple is what makes her so effective. She's an asshole vampire. She's having both Bob and Bayonetta off a siren. She's a simple antagonistic presence, but she adds something to the show because she creates conflict, which creates story a lot of the time. And it makes you want to stab teenagers. And if that isn't what children's media is about, you can tell me what it is in the comments below. But I think it would be cool to see Gari back even though her boyfriend did turn gay. Happens to us all, babes. The next character I want to talk about, another villainous character. I would say this is a controversial take, but I've said this take before, so I don't know how many of you will be surprised. Get Monica back in. Not only did she have the coolest G2 design, she served actual story presence for two movies. I love 
a recurring student villain. I love a character that just lurks around the corner to be an asshole. And she's got a brain purse. I've always been a big believer in that Ghoulia and Monica can and should coexist. And it is no different for G3. Again, they can change things about her design and her law, but I don't know if they need to change much. I think she's great. But I also think I'm the minority, so they probably would change her design and things about her. Which, if they did better things, is fine. I feel like I'm gonna be a bit mean and a bit generalizing. I think I'm gonna put the hybrids in clap if you care. I feel like I could see what they were trying to do with the hybrid storyline in Freaky Fusion, and I don't think it really worked that well. And also the dolls felt very cumbersome and hyper-specific in a way that you couldn't really package them in other assortments. You couldn't really bring them back for other things. They felt very limited in that. I love the body sculpts, but I don't think we're going to get body sculpts like that again. Bonita's giant static wings, Serena's weird pliable tail. I would love to see some of these bodies come back, especially Avia's. Again, centaur body, inherently cool. But I just feel like none of them ever really fit in or felt like interesting individual characters in the way that would make me want them back. Like, Serena's kind of funny... Avia has a cool design, but Bonita's full name is just two bone words, and they couldn't even commit to making the unicorn gay. I'm just not really feeling these, and maybe that's a little mean, but at least these are underwhelming to me in a completely non-problematic way. Speaking of which, Isi Dawn Dancer. She's never coming back. Isi is probably the most obvious example to people of a culturally insensitive design in Monster High. And I think if they did a Native American character, which I think they should do, they can do, I think they could make another Native American doll. And I think they could actually do it properly. Like even Court Thunderbird, who's in the series, seems like a more nuanced idea of a Native American character in the Monster High universe. But Isi's just too fetishized in the way that she was designed and portrayed. I think the Monster High team would sooner just start from scratch. Jane Boolittle is a weird one. She's kind of like a Katrine in that she got a couple more dolls because I think that she just has pretty colors and is kind of marketable. She's got a normal body type. But like, daughter of Dr. Boolittle? I don't know if Monster High are necessarily clamoring to bring her back. And part of her introduction was in promoting the Secret Creepers line and incorporating the pets into the web series, which pets are already in the G3 series. They don't need a pet whisperer. Jane Boolittle has been made redundant. The only way Jane Boolittle's coming back is if, like, she finds something else to do. Call me when you're in your granny, I got the job era. But still, I think she's a really pretty doll and I like her design. And if she did come back, you better bring back that sloth. One of my favorite pets even though technically it is just a blue sloth. Gilda Goldstag is one where I don't know what they do with her character, but I would like to see her back. I have a big affection for the backgrounders of G1. I love how distinct and vector-coloured their designs are. I'm always going to celebrate the comeback of a backgrounder. And Gilda Goldstag was a really cool doll. I like that she had her horns and her short hair. She was giving pink and not just the colour. <laughs> so Gilda Goldstag, yeah, sure, why not? All right, Valentine. I'm not gonna be liked for this one. I don't really care if Valentine comes back. I think he served the correct purpose in Why Do Ghouls Fall In Love. He was a pretty good villain, had a great ending, all resolved, all wrapped up. I think the only reason people want him back, this is gonna sound mean, I think the only reason people want him back is because he came out with gay later. And that is it. Now I want to see more queer representation. I do not care if it is this specific character. I just, I, I don't care if this happens. I mean, G1 is over, they missed the boat on doing that whole thing with all of that. It was the wrong time, or confirming it afterwards stuff. I don't have the energy for that in my soul. And I think that G3 in the main franchise is making a lot better efforts at providing queer representation. And I would like to continue to support that. If they did bring back Valentine, nice, cool. If they made him gay, nice, cool. I'm not losing sleep over it. And if it never happened, I probably wouldn't even blink. Castafias is one that I just don't think is gonna happen. I don't think she sold that well. I think that they were going to bring her back for Fierce Rockers, but Mattel vetoed that. I think her character is really cool and I like that she's a witch, but witchcraft is kind of more of a thing in G3 than it ever has been in any of Monster High. The early previews were saying that witchcraft was this illegal thing and that Dracula was doing it in secret and everyone was like, what about Castafias? And it's like, 
You think Mattel cares about Caster Fierce? It's actually the diametrical opposite. Oh my god. They just wanted another pop star doll, because kids like pop stars. Speaking of spontaneously introduced pop star dolls, Ari Hauntington. I'm not going to put her in clap if you care, because if they brought back Ari Hauntington, I personally would have a field day, because it would just be the most buckwild decision of all time. There's probably like a good 10 people that goes hard for Ari Hauntington, and to those people, you have my respect. I will never engage in eye contact with you, but you have my respect. Like, Ari Hauntington was so transparently, get it because she's a ghost, transparently a replacement for Spectra, and Spectra is back in G3. Ari Hauntington is a recast soap actress, and when you bring back the original, the only thing that's going to be calling for Ari Hauntington is Indeed.com, or whatever the monster version of Indeed.com is. I can't think of a monster pun. I'm I've been thinking of it for the past five minutes in my head, and you haven't even been able to tell, have you? But yeah, Ari Hauntington exists as a replacement for Spectra, and because they wanted another pop star character, because kids like pop stars. I would love to see, if they ever did bring back Ari Hauntington, how they'd do it. Even if they made her, like, a meta, hated, in-universe ghost, like, a parody character. I don't think they'd do that, but it would be kind of funny. I'm gonna need a nightshade I'm gonna put in. Yeah, I'd like I'm gonna need a nightshade, because she is a nightmare. I feel like I can't even say nightmare in the context of a Monster High character, because that- it feels like the word doesn't have any meaning. Like, the horse is called Nightmare. I'm gonna need a nightshade as a menace to society, and that's why she's a fun character. I'm not clamouring for it, but I also don't think it's impossible. And I know Frankie did knock out that corpse flower with their body. I don't care, it can still happen. Weirder things have happened in Monster High. That corpse flower can still bloom, and the most obnoxious valley girl on the planet can come out and demand everything is given to her. And honestly, I can still see that happening. I'm also going to put River Sticks in this category. I think that this is a more likely addition to the world. A Grim Reaper character is another very natural next step in terms of introducing new characters. I was never that into her personality in the Haunted movie, but that's what the changing stuff is for. G3 has been changing a lot of stuff. Y'all can change her personality. One thing I don't want to see changed is the translucent leg effect. Keep that. That is cool. And she has that little raven, or that little crow. All of the G3 characters are coming with pets now, pretty much. So I want to see that crow if you do bring back River Sticks. And keep her as a pastel goth. Pastel goths are cool. I feel like for some reason I really want to see Viperine back. And honestly, part of that is just I really think she's got a cool design. And I like that she adds to the Gorgon family. But if you think, if you think in this video I was going to only speak positively about G3, you are wrong. Because I have some complaints about G3, and this is my biggest one. They completely messed up, and I will use messed up for this one, the Gorgon family tree. And this isn't even about G1. This is about Greek mythology. You change the canon of Greek mythology by the name of Angie Katsanevis, I cannot let that slide. Sathena and Uriley are Medusa's sisters in Greek mythology, and that is, I believe, how it is in G1, because Viperine is Sathena's daughter, and Deuce's cousin. In G3, they decide to make Sathena and Uriley Deuce's sisters, which makes no sense, because apparently, first of all, Deuce has like a bunch of sisters in G3. First of all, why are you making the two characters that are in Greek mythology supposed to be Medusa's sisters, and therefore would be Deuce's aunts? Why are they the sisters? And secondly, you could have brought back Viperine. She doesn't even have to be Sathena's daughter if you don't want to. She can be Deuce's sister. I'm not that attached to the mythos. It just felt like they really, really screwed up that one element, and that annoys me. But I still think we could bring back Viperine. It's still possible. Again, Deuce has a bunch of sisters. Viperine can be one of them. I just think she has a really cool design, and I like that she is a makeup artist attempting to get by in this economy. Another character I'm surprisingly passionate about bringing back is Astronova, but I have conditions. I think it would be really cool to bring back Astronova to have an alien character, because an alien is technically its own kind of monster. She's clearly a different species. <laughs> She's not just a human from another planet. But I think that her G1 design really let her down because I think her outfit is kind of atrocious. And she had this flat plastic piece on her head, which I don't love. So for G3, I propose we bring back Astronova. She can still come down in the Comet Crystal, but it's not a playset. She doesn't come with a playset. She's just a standard doll. She has a pet cool alien pet. You can even steal a pet from Novi Stars if you're feeling brave. But I want her to have a full head of hair. I want to have a better outfit. 
keep her dark indigo skin tone. You can even keep the Ever After High connection if you want. It'll confuse people. That's the fun of it. The canon can't save you now. So yeah, Astronova. I want her back. So I am going to quickly address why the Frightmares are here. So on the Monster High website, when they updated the website for G2, they took off the Frightmares, a spin-off line of little horse women. They're little horse women. But they were taken off the Monster High site, except for one, and that is Skyra Bouncegate, who is pictured here. So while Skyra's picture is here, I'm going to use her picture to represent all of the Frightmares. None of these characters are coming back. The Frightmares were a fun little side project. A lot of people didn't like them. Some people did like them. And I liked some of them and thought others were kind of ugly. I mean, there are some cool designs in there. They had some really nice ones. Like, Fawn Time was really pretty. Airy Everfall was really nice. I think that's her name. I do have one proposal. And this one is going to be a very long shot. Like, this will never happen. But I have a proposal. Uh, Olympia Wingfield. Bring her back. She has a really cool colour scheme, she's got this cool gothic look, she has purple and yellow combined, which is one of my favourite colour combinations. Bring her back, make her a full-sized character, give her the avia sculpt, and make her a full centaur character, and she's like, a sporty centaur. I have a vision! Frightmares are probably never coming back, but that doesn't stop me. Trees of Thorn Willow is an interesting one, because trees are as a giant doll playset, can chalk. Teresa as a concept could work. It's not like a fashion doll made to look like a little wooden girl isn't something that already existed. Definitely not unprecedented. So if they did make a new version of Teresa, just make her a normal sized doll and make her like a wood grain doll. She can even keep the same hair colour. Just don't make her body this like tree trunk playset. Give her a proper outfit. Give her a nice woodland pet. Maybe a squirrel or a woodpecker. Wouldn't that be ironic? I want to see it. Sylvie Timberwolf I'm going to put in. It's probably not going to happen. And I feel like Sylvie was brought in because they wanted a new character in G2. Mattel knows that collectors like new characters. Making new characters make money. That was like Mattel's entire brand ethos for Monster High and Ever After High. But it definitely feels like Sylvie was kind of cobbled together in a way that makes her character feel very hollow. Like, you don't really know that much about Sylvie Timberwolf. And they could bring her back, and they could expand her character, but my main point is, and why I think she's not going to come back, if they wanted to bring Sylvie back, why is she not in the Ware Council with Mausades and Skunkrates? If they can bring back Mausades King, Mausades King, a character that I am very happy they brought back, but I admit that was a wild card choice. They very easily could have had Sylvie Timberwolf as a character in there. She's a werewolf. She could be part of the werewolf pack. Instead of Howleen being unrelated to Claudine, they could find a way to reintroduce Howleen as Claudine's sister and have Sylvie be that Howleen G3 figure. But they didn't do any of that, did they? So, therefore, I think Sylvie's never coming back. Even though I would love to see a new interpretation of her. Right, who, dude? This one hurts. This is the one culturally insensitive character that genuinely makes me sad that he's probably never gonna come back. Hi, I just wanted to pop in because I was re-watching the footage that I'd taken and I realised that I didn't really explain very much at all about why the character of Hoodoo is seen as problematic. So I thought I'd just come in quickly and explain a little bit of basically the basics. So the religion of West African Vodou is practised by several ethnic groups in West Africa and elements of this West African Vodou have evolved and found their way into current forms of religions, such as Haitian Vodou and Louisiana Vodou. And these religions have routinely faced opposition and unfair criticism. They've been sensationalised in the media. In fact, Haitian Vodou in particular has been categorised as one of the world's most misunderstood religions. There's also the spiritual practice of Hoodoo, which was created by enslaved African Americans in the American South. And there are several weather swords where the phrase Hoodoo is used in regards to Hoodoo. So I thought I would also bring that up. So the main point is that the existence of this character that's kind of adding to this trivialization, even in inadvertently demonization of the religions of Vodou. This isn't something that's helpful, it, even if they're intending to be well-meaning with the character. It's also worth noting that voodoo dolls have been denounced by many of these religions. They're not prominent in Haitian Vodou, and in fact Louisiana Vodou have denounced the practice and deemed 
voodoo dolls to be irrelevant to their culture. The reality is the linking of voodoo dolls to these religions is just a part of these negative depictions of Black and Afro-Caribbean religions. So I hope that all makes sense and kind of gives you a clearer idea of why maybe hoodoo doesn't need to come back in G3 of Monster High. Also, Who Dude was made by Frankie to act as a boyfriend in G1. G3 Frankie is rizzed up. G3 Frankie does not need a fake boyfriend, because they're with Cleo. That's another character sent to Indeed.com monster version, patent pending. Right, Elizabeth, I'm going to put in here. I used to ride a lot harder for Elizabeth than I do. She was my favourite when Fright's Camera Action came out. I was like, she's cool, you guys. She's gothic. She's not just a purple Draculaura. Me now, I'm like, you might in your heart feel like she's not a purple Draculaura, but Mattel probably did think that, and that's why they made her. <laughs> Here's the thing, I'd be happy to see her come back. I love the idea of expanding the vampire mythos, especially with Dracula being such a part of the series. But if they did bring her back, make her edgier, give her a pixie cut. She can still be a theatre girl, but make her even more grandiose of a theatre girl. Make her a demonic method actress. She's the Jared Leto of Monster High, just refusing to break character. You see, that would distinguish her from Draculaura even more. You've got to expand the characters beyond what they were designed to do. Otherwise, you do just have purple Draculaura. Rochelle, I feel like, is a given. I love Rochelle. She has beautiful designs. I don't think she's had a single bad doll. It's still got it. Gorgeous colour scheme. Marketable. Kids seem to like her. Collectors love her. I think Rochelle is not an if. I think Rochelle is a when. Garrett, however... Yeah. I'm sorry, again, he's another one of those characters where his relevance and the reason you are endeared to him is because of their character that they're paired with. It's not because they're interesting as a character on their own. And I've said it before, in the pantheon of Rochelle ships, Rochelle and Garrett is nothing compared to Rochelle and Deuce. The diary law, just, it's too good to not love. And now that Deuce is his own character, maybe actually explore that. I'd be open for that. I don't think Deuce should, like, never have a love interest in the series. I love that we're getting characters that are boys and are not just love interests, but you can still have a love interest. It can just be the other way around, so Rochelle's the love interest. But either way, Rochelle is definitely coming back. Like, I know it in my mind. Batsy I'm going to put in Yeah Jackie, but this is kind of tenuous, because I feel like the only reason I'm putting her up here is because I really like her design. I think her original doll is gorgeous. Her colour scheme reminds me of Spring Onions. That's it. <laughs> her personality is clap if you care, hard down, but I love her design. LED. This is another clap if you care for me. I mean, I like her design, and I think it would be cool if she was brought back, but come on. You don't go Jessica Simpson when you have Rihanna. Bring back Rebecca first. Give Rebecca at least three dolls. Then we can talk about LED coming back. I just don't necessarily think she's that interesting of a character other than her glitching out. Honey Swamp, I think, could definitely come back. It would be nice to have another Southern character and a character with textured hair. She has a gorgeous colour scheme. Dare I say this is like the perfect colour scheme for her. I don't think they need to change anything. I will say, for a character that was originally named Alligator, I would like a little more of the, the, the alligator vibes with the sculpting. I think they didn't do enough of it with her original doll. Give me full alligator face honey swamp. But keep her fangs. She needs her fangs. Those are really cool. Marisol is the last of the oof.mp3 characters to talk about today. This is something I've had to research a couple of times because I haven't been completely sure on all of the specifics. So Marisol is the daughter of the South American Bigfoot, which has been named the Maricochi. And there has been discussion about how this ties into essentially racism and how the existence of the Maricochi is contentious. For those reasons, I feel like if they did a Bigfoot character, I think they would just start from scratch. I would love to see a Bigfoot character and I would love to see a character with big feet. Not the same thing, but, you know, they can be the same thing if you wanted to. Marisol is just one of those characters that I just think they wouldn't even touch nowadays. That is kind of a good thing, because it shows that Mattel's design team have come a long way in terms of at least recognising cultural sensitivity. I feel like I've grown fonder and fonder of Lorna McNessie as time's gone on. I kind of found her a little bit annoying initially, but now I really see the charm in her. She photobombs because Getting pictures of the Loch Ness Monster is a thing. And I think that's really cool. And I'm all for the Scottish representation. I like that she had an actual story purpose in the Weather Swords. Even though it was the Laguna Gill story, which we could talk all day about how G1 Gill deserved the death penalty. 
I'll just say it. The death penalty would be the kindest thing to do. But honestly, I've just grown and grown in appreciation for Lorna. In contrast, Kiyomi's kind of gone a little bit down in my valuation. I would still love to see her back, and I still think she has a really cool design being a faceless ghost. But I think maybe I ranked her a little bit higher than I should have because of gay stuff. And I need to be fair about this. If I'm saying that the only reason people like Valentine is because he came out as gay, then maybe I should consider that maybe the only reason I was that hyped about Kiyomi was because she was gay. That's the thing, it's the way that representation is handled and how it's kind of shaped people's opinions of characters. But I still really like Kiyomi's design and I would love to see her come back. Porter I'm also going to put in this category. I just really like his design. He's got a great doll. I'm all for more boy characters. I'm all for more green. Just more green in designs. I think it's an underused colour. He looks like an ectoplasm, it's fun. But I will say, I'm not that invested in the Porter Inspector ship. And I think, as I said with slow-mo, a little bit of shipping switcheroo would be fun. So maybe ship Porter and Viperine. Porter and Widona. Potter and Invisibility. Oh my god, that's it. We need Potter and Invisibility together. Fucking make it happen! If I don't see shipping t-shirts of them on Redbubble in the next 24 hours, we're gonna be having words. And last, but not least, but not most either, Luna Matthews. I would like to see her back. I think the Mothman is another obvious choice to have a monster child made of. I like Luna's iridescent yellow skin. I like that she's a Broadway girly. Theatre kids might be a bit insufferable, but they deserve representation just as much as anyone else. The only thing is, she is described as a goth moth. If you bring her back, I want to see goth goth. And I know that goth is nuanced, there's different ways to be goth, there's not one way, it's not a monolith, but I still think they should make her more goth. Give me endless torrents of black tulle. I want garage door black eyeliner. I want fishnets, I want multiple belts, and I think the fishnets should have holes in them, because they're mothbin, because she's a moth. And she should still come with her pizza costume. So, a completely uncontroversial list of the characters that I think should be back in Monster High G3. Let me know what you think. <laughs> if you have any ideas for how you would bring back certain characters, especially if it's characters that I've put like lower down, and you think that you can change my mind, I welcome that so much! I'm not kidding, if you have an idea for one of these characters, you could genuinely change my mind, and I'd like genuinely not even be offended. I'd be like, happy. So do let me know. Also just let me know on which character changes in G3 you like and dislike, because I think that's a, a cool conversation in itself. I talked about how I feel about G3 Gulia, and I'd love to know if people have different opinions on her in particular, because I don't know what the consensus is on her. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, feel free to give it a like, and feel free to subscribe to the Alibast Dolls YouTube channel for more doll-related content. After all, I did promise to refilm that descent ranking. I'm probably not gonna get them out before the dolls come out for the new one, but that's my fault, isn't it? I should have refilmed it earlier, and that is okay. I will just miss that boat. Thank you so much for watching, from me and the Pog, and also call Refresh Frankie. I may as well include them in this. Have a fantastic day! <laughs>